Dear Boomers, I did a blog post today based on an interview I did with the author of The Last Frontier, written by Julia Asante. And this, uh, this interview was done 10 years ago when I was seemingly much younger. But in terms of eternity and in terms of who I am always, there's something that never changes. The title of the blog post is called The Psychology of Immortality. And I found that it came to me and I think it's very interesting. There are techniques that we can do to overcome the fear of death. We can overcome the fear of death by embracing certain techniques that enhance our spiritual growth. And whenever you meditate or whenever you do deep breathing, you come to realize that you're touching on the eternal aspects of life. And when you touch upon etern eternity, you are actually touching upon the fact that the spirit never dies. The soul is alive forever. Uh, I know this can't be proven scientifically, but a lot of times people have these experiences and that they believe them, they believe them to be true. So we can talk about how to conquer the fear of death and discover the liberating effects it has on our life. We can discuss techniques for afterlife communication, which a lot of people do successfully. We can examine near-death experiences and consider how embracing our immortality can lead to spiritual growth and consciousness expansion. And by the look of it all, you'll have some practical strategies to help you navigate this complex topic and potentially transform your relation, your own relationship with death. And I'm sure that everybody here has a relationship with death, especially the boomers who are coming upon the last segment of, of this life, and we don't want to have that kind of fear as we move forward. Our death is, the fear of our death, is deeply ingrained in our society and our psyche. It's influenced by ser several factors cultural conditioning and societal fears. The thinking of the world is constantly emphasizing youth orientation, always staying young by all means. There are religious influences on death perception and media and entertainment perpetuates this fear. And there's such a um, overemphasis on the way ce celebrities look whether they're aging, what did they do with their faces, what kind of work did they have done, and this and that. So I'm thinking that that has influenced the way people regard their own aging journey. And then <clears throat> there is an impact on daily life and decision making that has to do with the fear of death or that lack thereof. And these factors contribute to a collective anxiety about death that affects our choices, relationships, and overall well-being. But what if we could shift our perceptions and our perspectives? The fear of death stems from the unknown. We are uncomfortable with uncertainty, and death represents the ultimate unknown. This discomfort can manifest in various ways, from anxiety and depression, to reckless behavior and a desperate clinging to youth, as we have described before. By acknowledging these fears and their origins, we can begin to address them more effectively. The psychological roots of death anxiety can be the kind of like an existential fear, the fear of non-existence. A separation anxiety, fear of losing connection with our loved ones, fear of the dying process itself, which kind of is rooted in the fear of pain as you die, and suffering. 
unfinished business, we kind of worry about leaving tasks or goals incomplete, you know, our legacy, have we completed what we wanted to complete, etc. By identifying by identifying which aspects of death frighten us most, we can target our efforts to overcome these specific fears. Embracing death as a natural process can lead to profound spiritual growth and personal transformation. Here are some of the ways to begin this journey. We can recognize immortality in the present moment by focusing on the eternal nature of consciousness, we can start to see ourselves as more than just our physical bodies. This shift in perspective can help alleviate the fear of physical death. Practices like mindfulness, meditation, living in the present moment, and they, these things can help us experience the timeless quality of awareness, giving us a taste of what some might call immortality consciousness. Try this simple exercise. Close your eyes and focus on your breath for a few moments. Notice the thoughts and sensations that occur, but don't engage with them. Instead, observe the aware space in which these experiences occur. This awareness itself is often described as timeless and unchanging. So it's impermanence. It's the opposite of impermanence. It's permanence. And, it off, and, and when you get into this state, it offers a glimpse into our eternal nature. So we can, um, there are people who have near-death experiences. We cannot um, prove scientifically that these things are really true, but the people who have these experiences swear that they are true. So these near-death experiences, NDEs, offer fascinating insights into what might happen after we die. They might, but I think they do. But let's, let's be realistic, they might, they might. Many who have had NDEs report feeling a sense of peace, love, and expanded consciousness. While not conclusive of proof of an afterlife, these experiences can provide, provide comfort and reduce fear. Dr. Raymond Moody was the pioneer in the near-death experience realm, as was and is Dr. Bruce Grayson. They have documented thousands of NDEs, finding common themes such as the out-of-body out of experiences, such as encounters with deceased loved ones, such as a sense of unconditional love and acceptance. Unconditional love is part of this experience. It's very, very enlightening. And then there's a life review that happens and then there's a reluctance to return to physical life. But there's an awareness that their jobs are, have not been completed and they have something left to do. So they either come back or they don't. While skeptics argue that these experiences are simply the result of a dying brain, the consistency of reports across cultures and the profound life-changing impact on those who experience them suggests that there might be more to the story. Practices like meditation, mindfulness, and breath work can help us tap into the expanded states of consciousness. These experiences can give us a taste of the vast nature of our being beyond the limitations of our physical lives. It kind of gets us into the quantum fields instead of the matter. As we've discussed so many times on these videos, the lower frequencies of unforgiveness, of resentments, of guilt, blame, etc., do not help us move past 
and get into the higher states of consciousness and also the higher levels of, of uh, consciousness that are very important for our evolution as a human being. I guess we can all train ourselves to be a channel for these things. According to some experts, we all have the innate ability to communicate with the deceased it's not a special gift reserved for a select few, but a skill that can be developed into a practice and with intention. The democratization of mediumship challenges the notion that death creates an insurmountable barrier between the living and the dead. To tap into your own mediumistic abilities, start by creating a quiet, contemplative space, set an intention to connect with a loved one who has passed, and remain open to subtle impressions or feelings or thoughts that may arise. Write them down. With practice, these impressions may become clearer and more specific. These are the various methods for after-death communication, which include meditation and visualization, automatic writing, dream work, working with a professional medium or channeler. It is important to approach these practices with an open mind and heart while also maintaining a healthy skepticism. One effective technique is to keep a dream journal. Many people report vivid dreams of deceased loved ones by recording these dreams and looking for patterns and messages, you may discover a new channel of communication with those who have passed. And society can be transformed through death acceptance. As we individually work to overcome our fear of death and dying, we can contribute to a broader societal shift. This transformation can have far reaching effects it's a paradigm shift. We have to sh shift the paradigms of fear of death to a psychology of immortality. When we're no longer driven by the fear of death, we may be less likely to engage in greed, exploitative, uh, or excessive accumulation of wealth. Now that's interesting. Excessive accumulation of wealth is a sign of the fear of death. Wow. That is fascinating. And this shift could lead to a more equitable and sustainable society. We give away things. We are no longer withholding our great wisdom that we have accumulated through a lifetime. Consider how many of our societal problems stem from a scarcity mindset rooted in the fear of death. If we truly believed in the continuity of consciousness, how might that change? Our approach to resources, wealth distribution, and environmental conservation. Accepting death can lead to a more authentic approach to mortality based on genuine care for others rather than a fear of punishment. It can also facilitate forgiveness as we recognize the temporary nature of our conflicts. Because let's be realistic, anything that is bothering us changes and we can leave it behind very easily if we know how. When we view life through the lens of eternity, petty grievances and long-held re resentments often lose their power. This shift in perspective can lead to more harmonious relationships and communities. Without the looming fear of death, we may feel more free to express ourselves creatively and pursue our passions. This could lead to a re renaissance of art, innovation, and personal growth. Many great art, works of art and scientific discoveries have come from individuals who had profound experiences with death or near death. By collectively embracing 
death, we might unlock a wellspring of human creativity and innovation. I think, as I have mentioned before, having death cafes and it helps to bring people together to discuss their feelings of death in a supportive atmosphere. Attending these events can help normalize conversations about death and provide valuable perspectives because, first of all, nobody likes to talk about death in normal human society or out in the street somewhere. But these death cafes, that's what they talk about is death. So you feel more acceptance from what it is that you're grappling with within yourself. If, for instance, you've recently lost a beloved human animal, anything that you've lost, you can discuss freely in these death cafes. They offer a unique opportunity because discussing death is something that isn't really done in, in, these, in the thinking of the world, as it were. Incorporating practices like gratitude journaling, meditation, contemplative walks and nature cultivates a sense of connection to something larger than ourselves. These daily rituals can help shift your perspective from a limited mortal viewpoint to a more expansive eternal one. Each morning, spend five minutes contemplating the eternal aspect of your being. This could re involve reflecting on the unchanging nature of awareness, the interconnectedness of life, or the cy cyclical patterns in nature that suggest continuity beyond death. The, it's really a privilege to live in the four seasons, whereby here we are in the Summertime, it just came, summer's here, and then it's going to gradually, the days are now going to start getting shorter, and we're going to head into autumn when the beautiful greenery of the tree leaves will fall, we get into the dead of winter, and every season has its beautiful opportunities to witness life, death rebirth, regeneration. And the more we look at life that way, the more we will have a more joyful, more accepting, more, uh, you know, the witness that steps aside and watches it all instead of getting knee-jerk reactions is, is what happens. So we can have a bucket list with a twist Instead of focusing on experiences you want to have before you die, focus on the qualities you wish to embody and the impact you want to have on the world. This shift in perspective can transform your bucket list from a race against time to a road map for a meaningful life. By embracing death as a natural part of existence, we can transform our lives and our world. We can live more authentically, love more deeply, and contribute more meaningfully to the world around us. The journey of overcoming the fear of death is not always easy, but it's infinitely rewarding. And it might be good to surround yourself with people who are on the same journey, who uplift you po with positivity, and to realize that the more you do this, the more supported you will be. Instead of just thinking that you need to surround yourself with anybody and everybody who are on a chaotic path, you need to surround yourself with people who will and empower you, support you, and love you. So as we learn to dance, dancing with death, we may find that life itself becomes richer and more vibrant and more beautiful than we ever imagined. So please look at this video that comes up over here and check it out and subscribe. Bye-bye.